Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button. What's good, Danny? How have you been? I've been good, dude. Um, thought we were walking into like a light week as far as like news and hip hop. And dude, we just keep getting more. So this is our time to shine. Uh, shout out to the people going crazy on Instagram. So appreciate all the comments, likes, shares. Um, yeah, dude, it's nice. I don't know how you felt, but it was nice to wake up to like all that traction on like a, you know, a post and stuff. No, it's great. Cause, um, obviously we can't pick and choose when, when these things happen. Um, and I know sometimes something super eventful will happen on like a Tuesday and then we don't get to talk yeah. about it for like a week and then it's kind of old news. So it's nice that literally last night we got some pretty crazy news, uh, Hip hop wise, hip hop wise, yeah. So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, episode one seventy four, episode one seventy three, everywhere. How about you, though, man? How's your weekend been? And do I see you fucking setting world records as far as your <laughs> runs are going? So like, uh, how's that uh, training going for you? Yeah, training's been good. Uh, this weekend, our friend Andrew uh, was visiting again. Um, so this we nigga said it again. <laughs> 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 Again, I feel like every time we chat, he's here. So I was like, I had. And to he's also going to be in New York when you're in New York, right? Yeah, he's going to be in New York uh, when we're there. Um, it just so happened, uh, Moon, his his work schedule over overlap with New York. Nice uh, during that same exact week, so they'll be there. Nice. Um, but yeah, I, I tried to spend most of the weekend training uh, for the first time ever. Ran 10.5 miles. I was originally just going to do eight. Uh, which is what I did last time, but I was good. like, yeah, it felt good. Um, I only have a couple more weekends really to train, uh, maybe technically just one. So besides that, I was like, it's either now or never kind of thing. And yeah, it felt good. Just push myself to the limit without doing the full 13. Cause I'm like, if I'm not getting a medal at the end of this shit, I'm not doing the, the actual half marathon. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, they say you should though. Like they say you should do real? like the yeah. They say you should do like the whatever you're gonna run the day of. You should have already done that at least once, like two weeks prior. Got it. Okay. Well, maybe I'll do it this weekend. I think for me, like unfortunately, I only had time to do like three long races um, mm -hmm. or runs, so I didn't want to go from like five miles to like yeah, yeah, thirteen. Like, then stupid. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, how's the weather been over there for you guys? Like, is it getting cool, uh, hotter already, or is it still kind of cool? Is that, I feel like it's been getting colder. Um, today it's pretty sunny and hot, but uh, this weekend it was really chilly. Um, it was nice for the for running to have like a bit of a breeze. Oh yeah, and, uh, overcast and stuff. But yeah, it's been a lot colder than I would like. But no, no rain really. So that's been good. Have you cut out alcohol and stuff from the diet since you've been like training and stuff or like just no, not at all, <laughs> <laughs> which is another annoying thing. I mean, it's, it's cool that like, you know, Andrew's visiting and, and, you know, friends like want to hang out and stuff. Uh, I just been trying to not go as hard. So like with every yeah. drink, I'll have water, um, obviously try not to drink around the time when I'm doing like the long runs and stuff, but I haven't cut it out. Um, Fortunately, it doesn't. I, I, it doesn't feel like it's impacting my my sure. training. But um, yeah, it's been a, a tough one this month, especially dude, with work events too. Dude, it's been tough. Yeah, I have a work event that's coming for a Thursday that I'm dreading um, for that reason alone, dude. Because like, I had this like envision in my head of like, all right, like a month and a half before the wedding, cut out alcohol, just get real clean, and it's like. Dude, I feel like the and maybe you felt this way too when you guys were had the wedding approaching. It's like every time we did like a um like a milestone event, we're like, oh dude, we gotta cheers to this, bro. Like it's the yeah, last yeah. time we're ever gonna it's like the moment we paid off the wedding, bro, we had to get a bottle. The moment that um um we got our rings, we got a bottle. Uh dude, even me by myself yesterday, she doesn't even know this, so I hope she doesn't listen. But like once I finished the entire like DJ request for the playlist. I was like, oh, bro, you got to get get a glass, bro. Like, it's just, it's just, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, yeah. I've been, like, I've been not seeking, but it seems that I have, like, every excuse as to, like, why I keep drinking. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually thinking about, bro, like, maybe doing the whole, like, sober summer again and then doing, um, like, starting in June 1st, like, uh, the try the whole 75 hard thing. Um, What's that? Yeah. 
I think 75 hard is like this thing where like um, 75 days straight of working out each day. I believe you're meant you, you stop drinking. That's the one thing for sure. But it's two workouts, one indoors, one has to be outside. So it can consist of a runner or an outside workout. And then you also like read a book, like I think like a few pages of a book every day. So like just seems like a nice cleanse. And I feel like after the wedding and after like starting a new chapter of your life, I feel like the idea of that sounds nice. Um, so yeah, I might, I might do that. I'll, and obviously I'll give you, I'll share the info if you, uh, if you're interested too. Yeah, that'll be dope. Um, yeah, I feel like nowadays I'm, I'm really trying to get more disciplined with, with all that stuff. And even if I do drink, um, making sure I'm not going overboard just because I can. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And I like to get in. It's also like the summer. So it's like the most tempting time. So I think I, I also mm -hmm. had a, like clarity about my approach that let me do other things that kind of set me up to like, again, uh, budget correctly so I can pay for the wedding and not feel stressed. Right. Like I feel like the stress right. is at a minimum right now, knock on wood, um, because it doesn't feel like it's like, oh, bro, I'm in a really bad spot. How am I going to do this kind of a thing? So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Man. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, keep seeing the trainings. But, yeah, I would recommend maybe this weekend try to knock out at least 12 miles so you can like when you get to like mile 10 and 11 on the race mm -hmm. day it doesn't feel like oh fuck i've never yeah. been here before right no that makes sense cool but um yeah bro let's get into it episode 174 um i dude i thought we were going to come into the the episode talking about um might delete later and the the tracks and now i'm just like bro <laughs> <laughs> what happened to our boy? So if anyone's living under a rock and hasn't heard about what happened at Dreamville Festival over the weekend, uh, late Sunday night, Jake Jermaine Cole, I'm not calling him by his stage name, uh, Jermaine Cole um, apologized to the world for disrespecting Kendrick Lamar, saying that it didn't sit well with, it, with his spirit and that Kendrick Lamar is right to be upset at him and that he's going to stick his chin out. And if you want to take a shot at him, he understands it. No hard feelings. Yo, I don't know where we begin, <laughs> but yo, jump in, bro. Because I, I get, I've been a hip hop fan for 27 years and I've never thought I would see the day that two elite rappers were doing this. So please jump, jump in, bro. Cause I feel like I'm going to go aggressively too hard, which is wild for me. So just, Jumping. Yeah, I mean, for me, honestly, the the news was just as as shocking to me as anyone else. Um, I think for me, it was how soon this happened. I was bro. like, bro, the did where I'm I'm seeing people bigging up the diss fucking twelve hours before, and then all of a sudden, complete one eighty. And I'm like, what could have happen and it's at his festival when like the focus should be him you nigga like yeah, yeah focus on you <laughs> like bro you, got, you just dropped an album bro like yeah and he clearly you know he decided that he wanted to throw that diss on the album it wasn't like some separate standalone thing which he could have done so i'm like how would you have a change of heart that quickly and the only thing i can think of is uh either he talked to kendrick or two he realized how bad the the backlash was on the song and read the comments and was like damn you're right i don't believe half the shit i said i don't believe t pab is overrated and that i'm better than kendrick it was just because i i speaking from j cole's point of view mm -hmm. gave into the pressure of people saying it's up to him to save you know this beef but clearly he i think was overly confident and instead of putting his heart into it he was just appeasing the fans and then it i think he felt like foolish after yeah yeah so i mean we can probably there's so many ways to go with this like the why i think you're looting it like why would he do this now um but dude fuck the, we'll get into the why but aesthetically bro like the way this looks is just like Bro, I got, I got, I deleted the fucking, I sent a screenshot to Blair to give you guys some behind. I deleted the album from my fucking phone, bro. Like, I don't want <laughs> any association with that body of work, that version of Jermaine Cole. Like, bro, none. I'm debating about going through this playlist for the wedding and just, you know, does, I feel like no role models has to be there. 
But I'm like, mm, I don't know. You know what I mean? Because it's just like <laughs> two weeks away. But I'm going to leave it on for now. First person shooter sounds different now, bro. Like, man, this just looks like a bad look, dog. Like, in every possible way. Because it's, dude, I think my biggest issue with this is like, and then we'll get into the diss in a second, like his his response on seven minute drill. Um, but my thing is like, bro, like we all assume even our favorite rappers from Jay-Z to Nas to Kendrick to Cole to Drake, we know they elaborate who the fuck they are in these songs, right? We, we know there's some lies in these raps, right? Like you shouldn't be killing people at 38 years old, right? We, mm -hmm. we assume that we know that blah, blah, blah. But bro, if you're gonna go on this magical run where audio theory as a small platform so far, uh, Complex crowns you king of 2023. Everything about you is more like chest out, I'm that dude, you know, like, bro, for you to at least attempt to diss him, sound tough, and then 72, less than 72 hours are completely backing down. It's like, bro, if you don't respect yourself, how am I supposed to respect you, dog? Like, that's the thing. Like, it's one thing, again, like, if we never learn that these guys lie about it, blah, 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 it's like, all right, man, we just, but like, dog, like, you're, you're telling us you're a liar. And like, that's the part that I think I'm like most like shaken by in a weird way. Like, bro, like, the, who the fuck are you then, bro? Like, yeah. again, like, I, like, no one held a gun to your head. You're a fucking multi millionaire. You chose to put this record out. And for you to back down like a bitch with no response, and I think Little Duval, so like, not to take credit, but I get like, bro, like, you know there's gonna be no physical alter altercation that you have to worry about, like your life being threatened. This is literally just music. Like this is in the 90s, bro, when people get like killed. Like, bro, this is gonna be the safest fucking beef in the history of beefs. Yeah. Like for you to back down, like, yo, you're afraid about drive-by or some shit is, yo, know, wild to me, dude. That I'm glad you said that because that was the more frustrating thing. I know people are gonna say they would love two black men to do this and that, but we're, we're, no one's talking about every gun. You know, reference is, in my opinion, metaphor. It's a metaphor for lyrics, exactly. And not 100%. one single person has, in their right mind, thinks this was gonna lead to extreme violence. I don't think Kendrick or J. Cole said anything that was like a below the waist shot to where it, you're like, all right, you know, the referee comes in and says, this has gone way too far. Too much, like, too these much. Are all just right. Like I've heard way worse shit in, um, you know, like actual battle raps when they're talking about, you know, doing this to that person's, you know, family member or, you know, blah, blah, blah. I heard about and your baby mama, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that, those, that's just part of the game. And in, in this instance, um, I, I think j cole just really wasn't built for this or had his mind in the right place and like was just afraid to be disrespectful because he knows he admires uh kendrick obviously he admires drake as well and i think he he just kind of got thrown into this i think a lot of rappers also metaphorically feel like they have to say they're the best it's kind of just part of it as well and i think eventually he did make it into that conversation he's like oh shit I'm here, but I don't, yeah. I didn't really want to be here. I just wanted to be <laughs> the best, yeah, like the best I could be. Yeah. And then, and then people, uh, you know, gave him, threw him into the fucking gladiator coliseum with a sword and shield. And he's like, shit, I was just, I was just trying to have a good time and make money and a better life for myself and family. And, and now I, I, I'm like, sorry, this wasn't what I wanted. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, dude. Like, but it almost felt like he was obviously you sent me the clip you so you saw it but like it almost felt like he was like stuttering while delivering this message you know what i mean like almost like wow am i really fucking doing this bro like it's just so odd bro like just so so odd i mean let's let's jump into the the, the actual diss track so we can even I'm, and it, in hindsight now is always 2020 like you kind of i think you said it first and i think on re-listen for me like you can tell how passive he is on the diss track, mm -hmm. right? Like it's shots where he keeps alluding. I think he said at least twice, I don't even want to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, he literally like indirectly, he was like, 
I don't want to have to do this kind of thing. I don't want to have to do this, bro. So like, then don't do it, bro. But um, your thoughts on the actual diss track, the lyrics itself, the tone. So I feel like that's more of the backlash that he was getting as far as like mm -hmm. uh, critiquing the actual song. So what were your thoughts on 7 Minute Drill? So the funny thing is, um, I know a lot of people, I'll start off with what you said about uh, him saying he kind of doesn't want to have to do this to Kendrick. The hardcore J. Cole fans were spinning that as he's going to demolish him and he's playing nice. But I think you and I interpret it as like he's genuinely like afraid to engage yeah. in this kind of thing. But I'm not he's crossing spunning. that line. Exactly. Yeah. Afraid to cross the line. But when I heard it, I mean, I was, I think the flow and like delivery and stuff was cool, but I, I, I don't think it was convincing and I, I was unimpressed by his shots because these are all like basic Twitter talking points that people have said about Kendrick forever. He doesn't make enough. He doesn't drop enough. He, he, um, you know, some of his albums are too conscious and boring like T-Pab and, and stuff like that. And coming from J. Cole, it's more ironic because, you know, for a fact, J. Cole, his music's more similar to Kendrick's than it is to Drake, in my opinion, at least like in terms of the message and what who J. Cole tries to portray himself as. And I'm like, not for a minute do I see J. Cole in the studio listening to T-Pab or Mr. Morale and being like, man, that's just whatever. I, I just yeah. don't believe that at all. Sure. So for that reason, by the end of the song, I'm like, this is clearly someone who's peer pressured into making a song uh, against Kendrick. And 80% of it wasn't even like, direct. it could have been for anyone. He was just basically saying, I'm a good rapper. Like that was 80% of the track. Yeah. So and this is the thing though. And I, I remember when you, you and I were texting when before the, uh, the Dreamville apology, um, when we were texting just about the song, like, I think my thing is like, I'm actually okay with those jabs, right? Like, cause again, you're, nothing he's saying is new, quote unquote, to like the web, right? Like people have been saying this on YouTube clips, uh, Instagram comments for years, right? Mm -hmm. However, when it's coming from a peer, I do think those things hit harder, right? It's like, oh yeah. wow, like it's one thing for fucking Danny and Blair on audio theory with their, you know, one week it's 200 people, one it's 20,000 people. Like, yeah. it's, it's one thing if it's coming from one of your big three peers, right? Right. So I think True. that shit probably would have hurt Kendrick's feelings. Um, it's like, damn, bro, like, fuck, was it, was it, was it actually that bad? You know what I mean? Like, maybe it was, I don't know. Yeah, so yeah, I think to hear from that is a little bit complicated. But my thing, the moment I knew this wasn't going to slap, bro, was like the flow. Like this felt like on some like 90s, 2000, too laid back shit. Like on some Mace shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dog, like that's fine if you wanna, pro if you if you threw the first punch. But bro, you and I were talking about this offline. It's like, bro, like Hendrix sounded like he was looking for <laughs> fucking blood yeah, on yeah. like that, bro. Mm -hmm. Like- You feel was, that energy. Yeah, was no enjoying- <laughs> 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 yeah, did you sign it? Do you see like multiple people now, like on major platforms, using that phrase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like no, on now ESPN, it's, it's officially mainstream. Yeah, like it's it, no homo has gotten replaced by no diddy. This is mm -hmm. yo, what a crazy <laughs> though. This year is just insane, dog. Yeah, but bro, back to this is like, man, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Um, yeah, no, like that. Kendrick was like, like you can tell how much he enjoyed. Like the idea of him throwing shots at Drake, right? And then again, Cole was just like a random, bro, a nothing line, if anything, bro. Like, what, big three? Like, that's it, right? Maybe yeah. one other, like, subliminal, maybe, bro, but not really, or not enough that anyone's truly like, oh, bro, he's definitely like, you know, calling you a bitch or whatever. So, I don't know, man. It's just when Kendrick throws that kind of shot, I feel like if you're not coming that aggressive back at him, Mm -hmm. Dog, this is bow like, out. Bow out. Don't even say anything, bro. If you're gonna fucking uh, give us a half-ass disc record, and then now we know apologize 48 hours after it comes out, mm -hmm. bro. Don't drop the record, then, bro. Like I and I know uh, I think Charlamagne put out a thing today, and other people like are trying to defend him or his stance as far as like, oh, dude, he wants to, you know, mental health, and he wants to get his. I'm like, dog, nah, man. Like, yeah. stop. Stop, bro. Like, 
I, I love mental health, bro. I support that shit. I'm in therapy once every other week. I'm all for it, dude. But like, we got to stop putting things in a bubble because like, that's like the cool trendy thing to do, bro. Like you said earlier, these two black men were not going to kill each other. And you can call a bitch a bitch when you see a bitch. Yeah, he's being a bitch, bro. Like, this is just a bitch ass dude who's getting exposed. And like, you're not that tough bro and like there's times that you say shit that you just genuinely don't believe it and it overwhelmed you bro like mm -hmm. these are bitch things bro so like i feel like we just gotta call it what it is man because like I, I i don't know how people spin this to defend that yeah yeah i i he one of the lines where he for sure lost me was saying uh that kendrick fell off like the simpsons like first of all uh, like I wasn't even sure what he was necessarily referring to. I'm like, he can't be referring to the show. Like no one fucking refers to the Simpsons ever. Like when talking about fall offs or yeah, bro, you, like, you, they've been on TV for 30 plus years. Right. Like, that's the most thriving show ever. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's still memes. Every, anytime something happens and there's probably one out right here predicting J. Cole would ap apologize. Yeah. yeah. But they always <laughs> use the Simpsons. So I'm like, bro, like, was that really, like, did he actually say that? I had to stop and think, like, that's when the, the, my optimism towards this just tanked. Cause I was and like, that was like one of the first lines. One of the first lines. I think one of the lines people, like, you could tell when he says it, he's like, this is one of those bars that'll sting. But I'm like, mm. didn't make sense to me. Um, I guess he's saying the show's past its prime. He's kind of said that about uh, Kendrick as well in the song, but yeah, nothing about this diss at all was was convincing to me. And clearly, he wasn't even convinced because he apologized very soon after. Yeah. So if he didn't apologize, I mean, I feel like we're both saying like, bro, the the, the diss was average at best, right? I think mm -hmm. I was just grateful that he said something, right? And mm -hmm. then let the let the let the the audience decide who they prefer more. I mean, that's the beauty of hip hop, uh, you know, competitive nature. Yeah. But what's moving forward then? How do you feel like the uh the culture is going to perceive J Cole now moving forward? It's a good question. Um I would say moving forward they're just going to Appre they're still going to appreciate him for who he is like i'm still going to i know you deleted the playlist but there's definitely songs on there that are unrelated to being a goat that I, i'll still continue to bump but then there's definitely references to the uno and, and goat and stuff and now like i'm gonna have a hard time uh vibing to that because this is just gonna be front and center in my mind like are you do you believe that like are you gonna apologize to me at the end of the album for saying yeah. that in in song number four like i don't know maybe but i mean he, he's great like regardless of what anyone says he's he's still gonna put out good music um maybe this is his last project who knows but i think moving forward people are just gonna not want to hear uh like i don't think these tactics of these little snippets you know calling dudes out and you know saying i want the smoke and all that st stuff i don't think that's gonna have the same effect it's not gonna hit all. bro like, like it's they, done at this point if you if we were to dude it's crazy because these things happen so quickly dog two weeks ago we were talking about the delete later um like the little promos he was doing we're like oh bro this is raw this is you know where did j cole find this energy from he's about mm -hmm. to take over and like now if you rewatch that you're like I don't fucking believe him dog like you know yeah. you know what i mean like that's the tough part man like it just like you you called yourself a fraud you know like dude even mm -hmm. if he just didn't say anything like you can have a bad diss record bro everyone has one bro drake has one jay-z has one tupac had one like bro everyone has an l just dude if and the l here is only that he didn't put out a good diss record right yeah because that's it, bro. And that's okay. Like, dude, like, I, it's just so odd to me. So, yeah, I would say moving forward, bro, it's going to be really hard to take that kind of rap seriously from him. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's... I don't want my big three or whatever to be that kind of dude who's, like, a pussy. Right? Because that's how it fucking came across, bro. It, like, it's like, I don't know, bro. Like, you got, that's kind of a bitch move. Like, you know what I mean? Like, imagine if, like, Jay-Z was, like, 
dropped fucking um, takeover. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, ah, dog, my bad, man. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, bro. Like, yo, like, yo, we're good. It's like, bro, no, bro, right. you were fucking giving us lyrical gems and now it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like you hurt his feelings and shit, right? And that was way more disrespectful. So yeah, man, it's gonna be hard to take him seriously. I'll, I'll keep the fall off when it drops. Um, again, I still save uh, uh, the Cameron song from this ready. Um, but bro, like, yeah, even like the the Central Sea song, uh, Hide Your Bitch. I, dude, there's a couple of songs that I enjoyed. He mentions like, I the he, goat on there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of these songs sprinkle in like the whole, like maybe, there, dude, my thing is like, there's no way this is a marketing ploy. You know what I mean? No. Like, this is too bad of a look. And if it is, no. fire that person immediately because <laughs> you're getting terrible advice, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, I, I know the, the theory, uh, like one of the popular theories is that this stuff is all scripted, but I'm like, there's no such thing as win-win situation in this case because J. Cole's legacy, it, like, it's tarnished, like, for sure. This is like a ghostwriting moment for Drake. Like, oh, bro, there's I mean, nothing is, you can fucking do. This, that's a dude, great. I think this is worse, bro. I think this is worse, right? Because yeah. this is, dude, this is like you punking and bef you, you throwing in the towel before he even threw a real punch at you. Mm. You're just like, bro, I don't want any drama with you. And it's like, also, he start, uh, Kendrick started it too. Correct. Yeah. Correct, dude. So it's like, all right. So that's, I think that's, a, let's pivot a little bit then and move the, uh, the focus towards Kendrick. Um, again, he, he keeps being spoken about, which is crazy because, like, again, I, I don't think his verse deserved that. It was a great verse, but, like, I don't think he said anything too crazy. Mm -hmm. But, bro, in the last five years, this is the fourth rapper to apologize to Kendrick Lamar for some reason or the other. So Macklemore texted Kendrick Lamar directly after the Grammys back in the day saying, dude, you should have won. My bad. Like, why are you apologizing for winning? We can think that, bro. You shouldn't think that. <laughs> um, like, uh, Lupe Fiasco apologized to Kendrick Lamar for questioning his music ability. Um, and we've had, we have multiple conversations about how Lupe is like that dude. So for mm -hmm. like a true dude to apologize, also weird. And then I think Jay Electronica also apologized to TDE and Kendrick Lamar over some comments. I think either he made it in a magazine or maybe a verse. I, I don't know the exact context for that one. So, and now we have J. Cole, right? So this idea, is it like, again, I know Kendrick Lamar is seems like a very artsy, you know, human being, but do you, like, and maybe you have more perspective from like being from LA, but like, is it cause Kendrick has like gang affiliations? Do you think it's a TDE thing? Like, why are people so afraid of him? Or is it just lyrical? Like, they're like, dude, if we disrespect this man, he's going to come back with vengeance and, like, ruin our career. Because, like, it just seems very odd that these multiple people are very comfortable just bowing down to him for no true real reason on the surface. I, I, I would think that each of these scenarios should be treated individually because like for instance with macklemore i figure if it's any major black artist that has like respectable art um i feel like he would have done something very similar like if it was j cole or drake um even and i, I say that because i would imagine macklemore is very self-aware that he just is not anywhere he's a pop guy to, who happens to be a rapper at times yeah and culturally, no, he's far less relevant than most of those guys would ever be. Um, and I feel like deep down he knew like Kendrick deserved it. And but I think what he, album what, was that for again? Was that for Good Kid Mad City? Or um, I think it was Good Kid Mad City. Okay, uh, I'll double check in a second. But I think um, I think it was less about him being afraid of Kendrick and more so he he just was so afraid of looking like a culture vulture and I think he wanted to get ahead of the curve the narrative and, yeah, yeah, yeah the narrative and um and show people it was like the whole white guilt thing but then it, even that kind of looks corny as hell like oh please like I'm the white guy who like is doing I didn't want to win beauty. yeah you you could yeah. have it it's like bro, exactly wow. and then posting <laughs> the convo yeah um, it's one thing if it's a little tweet here like damn like uh 
you know, or it's a one thing if you generally just felt that way because he might have, but like, don't mm-hmm. share that with the world, right? Like, like exactly. let Kendrick say that story, right? Exactly. And you really think any other person uh, would necessarily do that for you? Probably not. Yeah. Um, just accept your award and, and move on. Um, and on, and then when it comes to like Lupe and uh, I, I think Lupe. I mean, based on what he said, at least he said he fears no rapper on Twitter after people are like, oh, damn, you're backing down to Kendrick. You're scared. I think maybe Lupe just realized like that energy wasn't necessarily warranted. And Mm. there's not many people like a Kendrick. Like he would rather Kendrick be at the top of the game uh, and getting his accolades versus like some random quote unquote bumble rapper who isn't deserving at all. And maybe realize, you know what, like let this man shine. Like he's, he is pretty good. Um, and and it's not like Lupe, I don't think Lupe's a hater. Like Lupe's already been at the top at certain periods and commercial success and all that. So I don't know. I I think it's more of a coincidence. I would, I would say, but it is interesting. Um, right, kind of like he's like the boogeyman of rap. When that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand. And he only comes out if you like happen to mention his name like a couple times. It's like, oh, like, like right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, dude. But like, I was also realizing this too. Like, as I listen to like Seven Minute Drill, like, bro, like that, like that song is just, dude, like it's the perfect combination of everything you need for like a diss track right because it's one thing to have a fired 16 Mm -hmm. that like it's undeniable but bro usually people move on right what's going on with this song is that people want to keep hearing this song regardless of the Kendrick Lamar feature right so then you have the Kendrick Lamar feature that's also enticing also exciting so now you can't get that entire verse and moment out of your head so it's like bro like it's going to be hard for anyone, which we'll get to Drake in a second, to kind of compete with this song specifically because, mm-hmm. bro, everyone loves the song. Like, loves the song. So yeah. it's just like, dog, if people are playing this nonstop who don't even know what's happening, right, it's going to be really hard for anyone to come back at you with any kind of response because, like, man, you're competing with a song that's a massive hit. This isn't yeah, some, yeah. like, random grungy mob deep which we love rest in peace to product uh to prodigy right prodigy yeah prodigy yeah. that um that a beat that like oh man like yo he spaz on that beat but like all right cool we're never gonna hear this shit again bro you're gonna hear like that for the rest of the year so mm-hmm. i think it's also very tough for anyone like for i think i think j cole was set up to lose especially with that track because bro like this is a the way Kendrick was able to like capitalize on that moment on a, such a specific, you know, production style, bro. It's uh it's gonna be tough, bro. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough for Drake to respond, I think. I think it'll be tough. Um, I I feel like at this point he he's kind of has no choice because J. Cole just dragged them back like fucking 10 feet in the race. Bro. <laughs> and, and, or a mile. It's not even dragged them back. It's almost like, like you said, bowed out. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, once you thought you had momentum, because like, bro, if, if that if that Jake Cole song was even like 10% better, I think Drake could have easily been like, all right, bro, we're good, bro. Like, let me just, I'll give him a couple bars on my next album and we'll just move on with this shit. But mm-hmm. now the the attention is going to go squarely on, all right, bro, defend yourself because your man mm-hmm. could even do it. So like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing is they had the, the, like, if neither of them said anything people could kind of move on and be like, well, you know, they didn't necessarily take an L because they didn't say anything. But when you step in the ring and then you run back out, I think it just looks crazier. And then it's like, all right, if Drake doesn't say anything, then the narrative's just everyone's too afraid and then automatic L for for Kendrick. But I did want to ask you really quickly. Yeah, go ahead. uh, If if J. Cole, if this diss was like actually objectively championed as like, one of the hardest disses and was like competing with like that mm-hmm. do you think we get this apology at all mm, great question um no dude I, I i don't think we do i think i think j cole's actions prove that he is swayed by people's opinion a lot and i think if it was a well-respected verse that's doing numbers and people are like holy shit i think even if his spirit was 
being damaged, I think he still bites his tongue because the public is telling him that's the version of you you like. Bro, this makes you question his entire authenticity, bro. Because he was always that rapper, like, bro, I'm gonna be different. I don't care about looks. I'm gonna wear dreads. I don't give a fuck about, you know, the jewelry. And it's like, bro, like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, just, just like, whatever, bro. Like, yeah, man, I, I think. I think the comments swayed him more. I think the comments swayed him to respond in the first place. And I think the comments made him, again, maybe, again, the lyrics make, I feel very confident saying, I don't think he ever wanted to put that track out. But I feel like that response that we got immediately was because everyone's immediate response was like, bro, that wasn't it, like at all. And I think he just backed down like a, again, I don't know who gave him the fuck this advice. Maybe it was just him and that's fine, but yeah, no, to answer your question, I don't think we I don't think he backs down from the track. I, I maybe he doesn't comment on it. It's like, yo, I already said my piece. I'm I'm happy to squash this, but I don't think we get a fucking 10 minute apology, bro. Like come right. on. The only thing I do like about this situation is like when I heard the diss in my head. Uh Jake Cole no diss? Diddy. I like that. Uh uh J. Cole diss. I was I was thinking to myself. Like, there's no, as a fan of J. Cole, I, I said to myself, this is not it. And I saw people on the internet um, agreeing with me, but then I saw plenty of people sending memes saying, you know, Drake, uh, J. Cole one, Kenny, uh, Kung Fu Kenny zero. And I'm like, this can't be real. Like, this is, this is the simulation at this point. But I'm you glad that, that anyone was even agreeing or thinking that that was actually right. a win for uh, J. Cole. Yeah, I'm like, this is just objectively not not a win. And I'm glad that not only the fans of J. Cole have, no longer can defend it by, by saying anything, but I'm glad J. Cole as well uh, is aware that it's not it. I just wish it for the sake of hip hop and this, I don't even want to call it beef, this battle um, would continue on and be an, ex an exciting thing. It's like, it'd be like watching Tyson and, and whoever and then you know, Tyson just is like, oh, my, my stomach hurts and then dips. Yeah, bro. Like, this is going to be an exciting time. Like, yeah, because you also, I think I'm upset because you also took away, took away the uh, the entertainment value for us, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure Kendrick had like a diss ready to go or would have responded, but, oh, man. Yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a bad look, bro. It's I think it's a bad look for him and his whole crew. And like, I just, again, it's just also odd to do it at a time at Dreamville where like, Bro, everyone is there for you, bro. You just dropped an album that you've been teasing or whatever, an EP that you've been teasing for a couple months now with like a bit of a rollout. Like this is the most popular you've ever been. So yeah, dude, this is a state in his career for a while, dog. Like, I don't know how you outlive this one. I think this is just gonna be like, all right, man, that was that time in 2024 where like he was kind of a bitch. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's kind of who he is kind of a thing. Yeah, no, it's... It's an unfortunate series of events, but um, still makes for it for an entertaining time. I think now, like it's kind oh, of oh yeah, but it's court. another thing, dude. I mean, dude, think about it. In the last five weeks, three of the last five weeks have been around this topic, but like in a way that's like not just like a quick little you know four hour burst on the algorithm. This is like mm -hmm. everyone stopping to talk about this. You know right. what I mean? Like literally drop everything bro like when i woke up at five to get ready for the gym i had to like just sit there and be like is this, am i really watching this like this is this a <laughs> real fucking thing that he just said yeah i was already asleep bro so i was like bro there's no and then like academics losing his mind mm -hmm. um yeah bro so okay, we can use that as a, as a as a segue but how do you think drake is feeling right now like drake in his mansion in toronto seeing this all play out like, what do you think is going through our man's head right now? I feel like he's like, man, I I see how they de uh, destroyed Cole. And he's like, one, I, if I step into this, if I lean into this B for battle, maybe it's more of a B for, for Drake. If I step into this, I cannot risk putting out some trash. Like, whatever I put out, has to, I have to stand on it and it has to be great. Otherwise, I have to shut up and take an L. I don't think he wants to go out sad and put out some mediocre disc that just uh, talks about the same low hanging fruit that anyone could have. Um, granted, that might take much longer, but I feel like in his 
I think this is also a, a an even more of a golden opportunity because I mean people are comparing him to Jay Cole too. So if yeah, he, can, he already just bowed out of that exactly. conversation. So really yep. now it's just two of you. <laughs> yeah, he bowed out. And now if Drake comes in and has some smash response against Kendrick, like Drake could also put an end to everything and and be the undisputed champ. And I'm excited to see that as well. I'm a fan of all three of them, but now J. Cole no longer like can I cape for him and, and be like, oh well, he can outbar this person, that that. So I, I think Drake is hopefully in, in war mode. Yeah, I think he keeps alluding to that. The tour is over. I think he posted his like uh his uh his notebook next to that championship, you know, trophy and stuff. I hope so, man. I hope so. So in the the other side of that, what do you think is going through Kendrick Lamar's head right now? Oh, he's he's sipping champagne off the coast of like fucking Greece or some shit, just laughing his ass off. Uh has these guys in a chokehold. For and, dude, for, for like nothing bars. Like just right. after saying nothing, dude. Like that's a yeah, thing. <laughs> like the simplest, like and then his hit song is still all over the place. And if they don't respond, less work for him. He gets the automatic uh they forfeit and he gets the, the trophy or whatever. And if they do respond, which I think he prefers they respond, then he gets to release or create whatever, you know, um career shattering songs that he has Track in the top. Has, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, he gets to have more fun. I feel like he's out of all these guys right now, the least stressed out about this because I think he's willing to to take it there if he has to. Yeah, bro. That's the thing. Yeah. Like and dude, they, and those lyrics, again, that were nothing, but like, dude, I kept like like I kept telling you, like, uh like like that is so memorable. Right, like it's a mm -hmm. memorable time, like because the song is so memorable, like, and like now when you see Cole back down, Drake hasn't responded yet, and we're not sure if he even will. And like every time you hear Kendrick say, "I'm really like that," you're like, "Bro, like it got it, got it true." Like it's yeah. kind of, <laughs> it's kind of true. But yeah, dude, I agree. Yeah. With that. I feel like he's chilling somewhere, probably shocked how much of a buzz this even has right now with him not even trying so hard. Um, again, not to say, dude, his 16 was flawless, but like, yeah, like it was it was no direct shots, right? It wasn't like, you're a bitch, or you can't do that. It was just like, all right, cool, let's have a little fun with this whole idea of you two being equal to me, right? That, that's that's how it was, bro. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's I would say it's, yeah, dude, he is by far has the leverage entirely in his corner because he already swung, bro, and he didn't miss. So... Like, it'd be one thing if that song was trash, right? It's like, all right, whatever, man. Like, uh, you tried, no big deal. Go hide for a few more months or something. But now, dude, you can, you, yo, he, the, the, the dub is already very much in his hands. Like, you gotta have, you're gonna have to steal that from him. And then to your point, like, I think Drake is fully aware, like, bro, I cannot, it has to be a fucking banger, bro. Like, right. even if the bars, <clears throat> excuse me, directed at Kendrick aren't like, earth shattering that song better slap bro because mm -hmm. they're already replaying this song non-stop everywhere bro so right, like right. you better come with like it's not just the the 16 we don't want a freestyle dog we need a fucking hit record from you <laughs> yeah. which think about that bro usually when you have to respond in a diss like mm -hmm. a diss situation is like bro give him like your cleverest 16 bars and move the fuck on Right. Like, we're now demanding, bro, you better come out with a number one record. Yeah. Which is a wild thing to even say. Like, that's, I feel like this, that's crazy, bro, because no other rapper had to do that. No, I mean, I'm yeah. not trying to move the goalposts for him. I'm just, it, I think it's a reality. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. And I, I'm glad you brought it up because, um, one, if, if this like that song was just some random, not a song that no one's gonna replay except for the shock value i think drake in that situation probably just moves on um and saves it for some interview but his like response but in this case it's like you cannot escape that song from the, whether you're at the strip club the mall you know the homeless dude down the street bumping Everyone, it like bro, everyone's everyone. playing it and it, it it's a great song for damn near every environment and i think it's it kind of works in drake's favor though because he is I, I heard other people saying 
he shouldn't uh we don't want to hear no melodies blah blah blah. but i think he does does have to have a back-to-back moment to where people have quotables and lebron on the court you know reciting lyrics and stuff it has to have that level of response because i don't think people in this case really care to hear like a 5 a.m in montego yeah. bay or something yeah shit. yeah yeah. i don't want a fucking 3 a.m in turks bro i need yeah, yeah. fucking yo i need i need a line that's like is that your girl's tour or is that your world a world tour or your girl's tour like i need a right. fucking memorable moment that i'm like oh shit he went there right so yeah yeah dude like that 5 a.m in charlotte shit was fucking trash bro so um yeah very very interesting dog this is again i did not think we'd be walking in i thought we we're gonna talk about the album <laughs> and say bro let's talk about the six or seven tracks we actually enjoyed and then we both agree that seven minute drill wasn't it but like you know good attempt um but bro yeah i mean good it's good for us bro it's good it's good conversation we've been saying for a year and a half now that hip-hop needs something i just didn't think it'd be the people that we always relied on but like it, it seems like we're getting entertainment from them in a very different way right it's not just three bodies of work that are doing numbers it's like all right, they're beefing, so that's exciting. But then they're not. Well, then they are. Like, dude, visually, bro, if you put this, like, in an eight-mile perspective, like, think about a, a time where, like, dude, this is, like, um, the main Duke uh, Clarence. Remember mm. from uh, from Eight Mile? Like, whatever, the, yeah, I don't know yeah. his real name. Yeah, like, when he's rapping and like, he just, he's like, hey, he has the mic in his hand and just doesn't know what to say. Like, this essentially is that moment for J. Cole, bro. Like, yeah. it's just like, like, bro, you just got punked, but you got punked by yourself. Like that's even that thing is like even crazier bro like that's the thing bro like like yeah i am so shocked that he said anything dog like yeah. like how do you apologize like who are yeah. you apologizing to bro like no one's offended by this like also it wasn't even like a quick apology like damn you know my heart wasn't in this diss like you know i have no ill will against that man let's keep the show going or some shit it was like he was like i love you like you all love him too right like best to ever do it and all, all this extra extra shit and I, extra maybe it was shit. like the guilt like just flowing through his veins but i just thought it was the apology was also very excessive yeah that's what i'm saying all of it just feels odd bro mm. like all of it that's why when i texted blair like all flat i was like there has to be something else going on bro like Maybe this dude has videos of J. Cole at Puffy's house, bro. Like, I don't know <laughs> what's happening. Um, bro, remember that um, I think J. Cole said this shit on some one song from his last album where he's like, uh, that Diddy swung at him. Remember that yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, I see why now, bro. Like, you're a fucking <laughs> bitch, dog. <laughs> Oh, he smelled fucking a bitch and he's like yo let me punk this dude real quick because he's not about that life bro like yo crazy <laughs> dude like oh man yeah dog i get it it's gonna be hard for me to look at him the same anymore bro which sucks bro because we do we, all we've been talking about is how much we love j cole's run the last like year and a half bro it's just ah oh, bro shitty but it is what it is bro again no one again no one forced him but himself so it's, it's hard almost to feel guilty for someone who like chose to do all these things without yeah. any pressure so it is what it is. So before we get out of here, though, uh, a couple more things. I wanted to ask you your thoughts on um, what we should expect with We Don't Trust You Part 2, which drops this Friday. Are you expecting more bangers, uh, more subliminal disses, more direct shots? Like, what are you thinking? I would say more bangers. Um, I would love it if there's more controversy in this one. At the very least, people are going to find ways to, you know, pick and choose what, you know, subliminals exist, uh, even if like a Kendrick or someone else isn't uh, isn't on it. Um, I doubt we get a moment like like that where, you know, we're talking about some, one song for another three months or whatever. But yeah, dude, um, I don't know about you, but I found it hard to even think about what other songs I like on that album. Whereas yeah. like I'm, I keep only going back to that song. Well, I guess type shit is also good. Type but. shit's good. I like slimed out, and I think fried was another. But like that, by far is like pretty much the one I, I replay, and not even just for the Kendrick part. Like I think it's no. The best that's what song. I'm saying, bro. Like that solo from Metro, like overdoing it with the beat is just mm -hmm. like, dude, marvelous, dog. Like yep. it's all the words expressive. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um. So you, but would you ex? Dude, 
so what are your thoughts on like is it weird with such momentum like you think this is just like them capitalizing off it like do you because my fear is that we're it's not going to be that good right like, i think it's going to be essentially a deluxe i know yeah. they're saying it's not but like it is bro like this is what that is so like are you excited to actually get more songs or you're just like you know good for them to capitalize off the moment honestly i'm excited purely because i wonder if we're gonna get any more information on this alleged beef between everyone but okay in terms of the music i'd say i'm like lukewarm excited like i imagine there's gonna be one or two songs on there that i genuinely like but again i i feel like with the kind of music they make i won't call them throwaways but i can imagine it, it's very easy for these guys to to churn out music like it's really the music they're putting out isn't that deep by Correct. any means so it's like you know it's just gonna be an extension of this in my opinion and you just pick and choose what you what you like and we'll call it yeah. a day. And the momentum i think is really important because everyone's gonna tune in and hope they can yeah. find another diss in there and bro cash in right i think uh future just sold his masters so i think he's getting paid a lot for, like i think dude i think like financially this is a very good time for them right like lucrative wise all eyes on you, number one record, number one uh, album. Um, dude, that's a great point. Yeah, dude, like, these albums by Future, bro, like, turn and burn, bro. Like, it's like, it is what it is. Like, it's just constant, you know what I mean? And it's, like, similar to Gucci, right? I think Young Dolph was also similar. Like, bro, like, there's not, like, it's fun substance, but there's nothing there that he needs to sit down and fucking put his own like beautiful mind shit on the wall and like all right bro if i say this this is really what i mean how do i get the story to like do that that never happens bro so yeah um so yeah that's my thing there's too many times with these albums i'm just like man whatever bro like it's a playlist man and it's mm -hmm. like two or three songs you're gonna like one you're gonna love hopefully and then you move on so yeah I, I, my expectation for we don't trust you part two is like i hope i find one banger who, that it's obvious to me um, because again, I, I think Metro is super fucking talented. And I think whoever is going to bring the best out of future, it's going to be him. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. You think we get any more features though? You think this is more like that same little crew of him, Travis, uh, Metro and like Playboy? I feel like it would be mostly them. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was kind of like a couple left field features here and there, like a Kind of like what they did with Kendrick, but not in a controversial way, just more so, hey, let's let's switch it up a bit on like one or two songs. Let, um, let Nav get a 16 in? Yeah, something like that. Like, I, I feel like that'll be the case. Um, but I, I think, yeah, they're just capitalizing on some songs they already have and they don't need, you know, controversy to to sell this particular portion of songs. No, this shit is, dude, yeah, this the number is going to be stupid. Um but yeah, shout out to them. Um, well, did you you said um, podcast alumni Johan Lennox was on part one of this? He was on. No, he was on uh, the which one was it? I just sent it to my brother the other day. Um, no, he was on the Bryson Tiller album. That's Sorry. what it was. Damn. That's what it was. That's what it was. No, so I, I think it's because. Um, Metro posted something today and then Lennox was in the comments. So maybe we'll get a surprise and see if he's on this album. Um, nice. So if you hear strings, you know where you heard it first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, anything else, bro, you want to talk about before we get to uh, Heat of the Week? Uh, no, nah, let's get to it. All right, episode 174, Heat of the Week. My guy, what was uh, the one song that stood out to you? Um, for me... I would so I, there there were a lot of good songs um that I came across. Um surprisingly most of them were were R and B tracks. Oh yeah. Um so it's hard to choose, but I think the one I'll stick with is hmm. I think I'll go with I'll go with a lesser known uh artist. Um so this one's called Deadly by Joe Trufant. I think I may have selected him for uh, Heat of the Week maybe like a year ago for a different song. But in any case, what I really like about this song is it has kind of like a high-pitched sample in the background. It has a nice bop to it. You can hear 
a, a Drake influence um, just in his flow and, and the vibe of the song itself. Um, I would say it's, you know how some Drake R&B songs can be? They're kind of like bangers, but not really. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's something you could bump. And at the end, I think it's just a really smooth flow. Um, my brother Corey is familiar with him as well, I believe, based on what he said in the past when I shared some music from him. So I would definitely check that out if you if you haven't. Um, he's someone that I, I constantly uh, check out for if he does release uh, some new stuff. Yeah, definitely send that my way, bro. I mean, yeah, maybe you did. I can't. The name is definitely not ringing a bell, though. I'm not going to lie to yeah. you. But no, it's tough. Yeah. All these artists have, uh, like me, have two names now. Oh, yeah. So it's like, yeah. It's like like, Sam Johnson and this and that. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to keep up with all this shit. It's like <laughs> taking attendance at a, in class. 100%. Um, no, I'll definitely add that one. For me, but oddly enough, again, I'm going to just, I'm going to lean towards I love the beat so much that it, I, I'll, I'd be lying if I didn't say this was the heat of the week over the weekend. I got goosebumps when I heard the beat. Um, so it's going to be Jermaine Cole featuring Cameron. Um, mm. Ready 24. Dude, Diplomat's fucking like legendary track. Um, and again, obviously Jermaine Cole is a much better rapper than anyone in Dipset combined. So the you know he's you know always gonna elevate those songs the same way he kind of elevated that Amine song when he saw that beat. Um, yeah. So it was just cool, bro. And then Cameron, dude, shout out to Cameron, bro. Like I feel like low key like what a run for him you know like he was on the like the j cole album a year and a half ago his podcast is taking off like bro like i, I think it's always pretty cool when these rappers have like a second you know bre like second wind like of their career and it just blossoms because like, again like you never know what's going to happen right like not everyone can become an actor like will smith and hello cool j um yeah. and then you can only put out songs for so long where people are just like we don't give a fuck so yeah it's cool that he can still jump on, jump on a track. It's enjoyable, but his career is also blossoming on in the podcast platform. So shout out to him. But yeah, Ready24, dude, if you want to go to the gym, do a PR, do fucking 8.5 miles in your best time, listen to that song on repeat, bro. That was a time for the diplomats that, dude, every fucking song was like a banger, bro. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Ready24 is, is that for me. Nice. I love love that song and it, it's crazy how certain rappers uh like when you hear a beat you're like i know this is a beat specifically for yeah this rapper and i i feel like you can't say that for for most rappers uh obviously you know like a, a drake or whoever can fit on all kinds of songs but with this beat like immediately i said to myself is uh, when i was like four seconds into the song like Cameron should be on this beat, and then sure enough, <laughs> he pops up on the song, and I'm like, all right, perfect. Like, perfect. This I'm makes not crazy. Perfect sense. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, sh quick, uh, five to ten second summary of the Bryson Till album. Five to ten second summary. I, I say it's phenomenal. I okay. will admit I've never been the biggest Bryson Tiller fan. I've always thought he was talented and, and generally liked his music, but I wasn't like, oh, I need, you know, new tunes from it. This, I think he taps into a, a more upbeat, mm -hmm. fun, kind of futuristic uh, style. Uh, if you're a fan of like Afro beats um, and like K Tronada style stuff. I'd say this is definitely a a must listen uh, if you're a fan of that approach. If you're more of a fan of traditional Bryson, you might not be the biggest fan because I think his older stuff was more like slow and uh, I don't know, down tempo, sadder, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, dude, my thing is like, I, so I, I listened to it. I think I listened to it in the wrong setting um, because like I was in the gym and I don't know, man, Bryson's a very unique, which is why I think he's done so well for himself. Mm -hmm. Like, his flow is very unique, right? Like, yeah. it's almost, like, just slightly faster-paced talking, but then mm -hmm. it's singing, but not really, but it is, and it's, like, rapping, but it's not. So, like, I don't know. It's it's very hard for me, like, because the beats were so different when I just got used to how he was doing it before. Yeah, so, yeah. like, it just wasn't hitting for me. So, but that's... I, I'm not ready to give it a ranking because... I know I just have to properly be in the right settings, like take it all in. Um, mm. But yeah, because like, I, I see what you're saying with the beat selection, very different from before. But I think my ears are used to him on those kind of older beats, like on exchange and stuff, where I'm like, 
well, I just got used to that for like the last yeah, yeah, six, yeah. seven years. So this is like so fucking left field that I'm like, mm, I don't know yet. But I, again, but the comments online that I'm seeing are all positive. Yeah, no, the comments uh, I think are pretty positive. I I didn't listen to it during the gym or running. Um, I think I was actually like in the shower and in the car and stuff. And I think- it's like vibing? I, yeah, I think that helped for sure. Cause um, um, I had skimmed through it, but then when I had time to just like chill and not be active, the songs seemed to to hit a lot better. Nice. Yeah, shout out to him. Uh, yeah, dude, Bryce did it. When we're getting music from these guys, I think Doja Cat even dropped an album this past weekend, but again, everything was mm -hmm. about J. Cole. So, um, yep. yeah, it is what it is. We have Bryson Tiller. I think the album's actually just called Bryson Tiller, too. Yep. Um, so, go peep that. Um, all right, my dude, let the people know what we got going on, uh, where they can find us. Let's get out of here. Yes, yeah, sir. Catch us at audio theory.com. New episode every week on all platforms. We have the Spotify and Apple Music Key to the Week playlist on there. So, be sure to peep the new selections. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, check down below. We got the merch, free to cop. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and donate to support the channel. Donate, please. I uh, love you, bro. Talk to you soon. Love you too. Peace. Peace.